Hey guys, this is a driving vlog. We're gonna see how this will work. I've always thought, oh yeah, that'd be kind of cool, vlog while you're driving. Kind of dangerous though. But I think if I just leave the camera right here, I'll be fine. Oh, I kind of forgot my seatbelt. I'll take it off at the end of the driveway. Anyway, um, this is my weight loss vlog. My name is Kara Moon Lin. And um, I wonder if I get a sticker right here, especially during the seatbelt process. No, you can't see me. How's that? No. I'll just put my seatbelt on just a second. I am getting ready to go walking with my friends at the high school gym. We try to get together and do this twice a week. And then um, there's also a group that does the Zumba workout tapes um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So there's ample opportunity out here to exercise when it's terribly cold, like it usually is. Like it is right now in February. Anyway, um, what do I, I want to keep talking about hoarding a little bit, but I also want to talk about Radney Foster, who I'm naming this vlog. I love Radney Foster. And if you were searching for him and you found this vlog because you love him too, or you are Radney Foster, then you should put that in the comments so I know, because that would be very exciting. So let me know if you found this because you were searching for Radney Foster. Otherwise, this is my weight loss vlog, and I'll stick my weight for the week in the corner, or the last couple of digits of it anyway. Um, I have my t-shirt on, my Radney Foster t-shirt. You probably don't know who he is. He's like the best kept secret in country music. My husband and I went to his, um, oh, that was my husband, oh dear. Um, <laughs> we went to his concert, he had my Drunk on Love t-shirt. I don't really like to wear it around town too much because people might think I'm condone drinking, which I don't. Anyway, um, yeah, my husband and I went to his concert a couple of years ago, but I've just been a fan of his for years. Sorry about that, my camera just kind of quit. Um, that's why I need a new camera. And I'm almost at the school. Um, so, yeah, I've been a fan of his for a really long time. And um, I actually sent him an email, it was a MySpace message. That was the whole reason I actually got on MySpace was because I saw that he had a MySpace page and I wanted to send him a message and tell him how much I loved um, one of his songs. It's called Fools That Dream. It just, after we lost one of our babies, the baby that I carried for five months, it just really touched me. Uh, my husband and I had been married for about 10 years. We lost the baby and then about two weeks later was our anniversary and he was so cute. He went on Amazon and found the newest Radney Foster CD and got it for me and um, gave it to me and we listened to it all the way to town going out to dinner and I just cried and cried. Oh, it was so hard. Such a hard time in our lives but we got through it and I just wanted to let him know that, you know, that was, those are speed bumps by the way that that really touched me, the things that he'd written. And you, can, you should go look that song up, Fools That Dream by Radney Foster. And um, actually, the same time that I wrote him the email, he wrote back and said, you know, he was glad for that email and um, how much he liked that and that his dad had just passed away like that week. And I thought, oh my heck, what are you doing sending me an email? But anyway, that was really sweet. And so I, when we went to his concert, I kind of tried to remind him of that because He's a very accessible guy. He'll sign autographs forever. And I got my sheet music signed. That was cool. Anyway, I better go. I'm really late. My friends are going to freak out, I guess. Anyway, so I'll be right back. Hey, that was brutal. I lost the hat. Didn't actually lose it. I just got rid of it. Um, we only walked, but I walked for a full hour. Um, my friends had to take off a little bit early, so I had to do the last 10 minutes by myself. But... The baby was holding my hand when I got to the hour, so that's exciting. I've been working on getting to this hour for months because I had a hard time getting up the excitement to exercise. So I told myself, if you'll work out for one minute on the treadmill today, and then two minutes tomorrow, and then three minutes, and on and on, and I finally got to an hour today, and I'm gonna try to keep it. I'm gonna try to make an hour every day um, from now on, except for Sundays. I'm probably not gonna work out on Sundays. But just walking, doesn't you know, nothing too strenuous because I'm kind of wimpy. But it was super fun to do it with my friends because we really enjoy talking to each other and it's fun to just work out together. It's kind of a release, you know, you get to talk to them about things and things that are going on in your life and bounce ideas off of them. So I would definitely encourage you to work out with friends if you can. Anyway, but I wanted to talk about hoarding a little bit more today now that I'm done with my 
rant about Radney Foster. Um, anyway, we're gonna go to the bank too. Oh, there's my husband's uncle. Hello. Maybe that's not him. He doesn't wave, he's too grouchy. Um, anyway, reporting. Okay, so my little girl's a fifth grader, and she said the other day in her class there was this horrible smell and they didn't know what it was. And so they looked in this little boy's desk and he wasn't there that day. And a school lunch carton of milk had exploded in his desk and um, had gotten all over everything. I guess milk explodes when it gets too old. Who knows these things, because we just drink it. But um, he'd been hoarding that in his desk and they also found a really brown, really gross apple. So, you know, hoarding tendencies start young. Who knows? I, I don't think that he's food deprived in his life, but you never know. I think he just had those left over from lunch or left over from breakfast or something and just decided to bring them back to his desk and then just forgot about them. And I said to my little girl, what do you think his room looks like? She said, that's what my teacher said. <laughs> so I'm on the same schedule as her. That just made me laugh. Anyway, so here we are, we're going to the bank. And pretty soon we are gonna go down to where we have our big dumpster. And I am going to get rid of my giant bags of um, uh, dollhouse furniture and the two sides to the dollhouse that I need to get rid of. So, cause I can do it. It's not that big a deal. I can let it go and I will. And I'm gonna kick this hoarding thing as best I can. Just small steps, that's what I'm gonna do. Just set limits for myself and try to be realistic. And I realize that all of this junk has come into my house just like one box at a time. I'm a sucker when somebody says, oh, I have all these baby clothes. Do you wanna look through them? Or um, this really nice lady gives my little son stuff and, and they're nice things. They're nicer than what I would probably buy for them. So anyway, we're gonna go to the bank even though I look like this, can you imagine? I'm wearing these cut off workout pants. I'm just gonna go through the drive through but my whole community has gotten used to me looking this way, so they're probably a little, like, I don't know, when I do dress up and I take off the glasses, they probably think, who are you? Oh well, anyway, so I'll talk to you in a second and I'll turn on some Radney Foster for you when we get over to the dumpsters. Because the dumpsters are like five miles from my house. That's where my garbage is. And so is my mailbox. It's a hard life living out here in the boonies. Anyway, I'll be right back. Okay, Radney Foster, if you are watching this, I want to sing back up with you someday. At some concert. I'm really good. I can pick out all the parts. And I've been listening to you for years. Maybe I'll demonstrate in a little while. I have the original Radney Foster CD going on. The case is even broken. I've listened to it so much. It's um, Radney Foster, Del Rio, Texas, 1959, which I believe was when he was born. Isn't he cute? Look at his little glasses. Oh my gosh, so cute. Anyway, I should quit gushing, but what can I do? Anyway, this is one of his songs. I think Old Silver's the last one, so that'll be a good one. Okay, so my little niece was born and everything turned out really good for her and I need to get her sweater mailed off to her. Oh, my neighbor's gonna come run over me. Um, what else? And then I have a deal with my sister. We were gonna um, go out to eat as a celebration for me getting my 60 minute workout goal. And I, I know that's kind of counterintuitive, but whatever. But she really wants to go tomorrow, but I really can't justify going another trip to town tomorrow because I live 40 miles from civilization. I mean, we've got like a little gas station here, a couple of gas stations and a little store and a couple of little restaurant bar things. But um, there's this one place that we really want to go. And I think we're going to have to go in a couple weeks because she works nights and she's on one week and off one week at the hospital and it's just too hard to get together. So I think we're going to go for Fat Tuesday for Mardi Gras. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, we don't really celebrate it per se, but um, anyway, I just think it'd be really fun to go that day because, you know, Fat Tuesday, come on. Um, anyway, so we'll see what happens there, but gotta convince her though because she wants to go in tomorrow and I just went to town yesterday so I, I really can't justify another trip I'm trying to conserve my gas to just go in um, every two weeks anyway I wonder what all these people think as they pass me and I got my little camera sitting up here they probably can't even tell anything's different but okay we'll be there in a second I'm gonna go dump off my bags okay it's gonna be a very delicate procedure I'm gonna leave you with Randy Foster to listen to
feel lighter somehow. So good. Because it wasn't the having the dollhouses that was so fun. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> so actually, it was the building them that was so fun. Okay. I think we're going to go visit Grandma for a minute. She doesn't get out much, so she likes to have some company. Okay. Keep up the good work, you guys. I'm going to work harder for you. All 18 of you. Like, Browning Amy, such an awesome girl. And, let's see, who else is there? Chris Mark, 2000. You're awesome. And, Jelaine B. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys and your support. And if you like my vlogs, please subscribe. And if you like Randy Foster, go enjoy him. He has a new CD out. It's called Revival. Very fantastic. I love this song, Old Silver. <clears throat> Should I sing a little? I can't. My throat's too dry. I know it's really sick if I get winded after that. Oh, that's what I should do. I should have turned off the blower. Sorry. With the grace of a gambler and he lost his rhythm. He his lines better than a good corny barker. Hi. For the best damn boots that you ever had seen. I love you. And the best snake skin boots that you ever Can you sing? See. Can you? Lady, she loves him. She never asks questions. She laid awake wondering on many a night. I can't even harmonize with this part. There's no harmony. She was leaving most every morning. She always would kiss him when he turned out the light. She was always right there when he turned out the light. So it's been on my life list, Radney Foster, to come sing with you. So eventually we'll get it done, because I know you're going to be singing for many more years to come. And so will I. Old Silver took the love of a lady who never got old. Did you tell your suckers all gone? Me. <laughs> you're going to think my kid wears her hair like that all the time. Yeah, she kind of does. Kind of related to her mother. Okay, you guys, see you later. Thanks so much. Bye.